Uh, meeting to order at 5 16 p.m. on Wednesday, September 7th. And we have a um, number of matters to deal with, including current events. <laughs> Here are, we'll start as usual with our minutes of the last meeting. And I'll go get a pen. How much reviewing did I don't recall how much reviewing we did on the 1.3 story homes? We didn't do a great deal at all. We so, looked at it and met, talked about uniformity and grading condition. We did not make any changes, certainly. On all 1.3 story homes? I believe we looked at the entire list, yes. Okay. I don't call looking at them. I just remember. Okay, would you like to amend that or omit it? Yeah, I don't. I I don't recall. Do you remember call what we talked about? Not the specific words. My thoughts are that we were looking at them, and then I said, "Really, let's get into the bigger picture, which is what we need to take care of now." Right. So we really didn't as opposed that. to that's that's true. Yes, that's so, right. So we didn't check for you form uh, and condition and grade. So I don't think we should really. Okay, we will delete that. <coughs> Last line for the minutes. Okay. Um, move to approve as amended. Yes. Or second. Second. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Laurie, we're approving as amended. Mm -hmm. You want to sign that? Uh, yes. Okay. Because this one, I will yeah. say the initial is. Okay. If you would too, that would be great. Okay. Oops. What's this? Oh, that's just another copy. Oh, okay. That'll just be, uh, we can put that away. Into the... That's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, new mail, pay any bills. Well, among other new mail, we did go into the system and get the look at the figures for Community Preservation Act exemptions, surcharge exemptions. And they're still showing the 22 affordable housing income limits, uh, which is probably what we'll be using in later in the fall for those exemption applications. Um, and so what they show for Conway is interesting. The area-wide median income for a family of four is 92,200. Now the low income limits for a household of one is 51,632. For a household of two is $59,008 and so on going up. Um, if you, your home income is less than the figure for your category, you are qualified to have an exemption of the Community Preservation Act surcharge. Now with CPA, is it just income or is income and assets? No, income. just income. Just income? Yes. Okay. But yep. that, and you know, interestingly, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Any, someone can apply for that anytime year round. Mm. That has no application period. It doesn't close oddly enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we'll be putting those figures up on the website mm. as soon as the website stabilizes a little bit. Yeah, so that they're available. You know, it's interesting to me because I saw this and it's like, how come, you know, for the senior discount or the discount for low income, 
seems to be so much lower than this. It's it like, does. It, well, this is entire household. It's not just seniors, although I think there is a column for seniors. Yeah, but still, it's like, and it is, and and, and we're going to have it on the next town meeting, um, on the warrant, a request for permission to raise those values. Yeah, because and been... to petition the state to allow towns to raise it. Right at the moment, we have them at their highest I spots. Mean, they're putting it, I think, at forty thousand for yes, and it's like you buy a vehicle, and it's almost that's well, you right. Don't want that, do you? No, they're ridiculous amounts. Yeah. Yeah, they really are. Yeah, let's just initial that we saw the figures. Okay. Yeah. Oops. So they're ridiculous figures and they probably exclude way more people than they should, mm -hmm. but it's what we have by law to work with right now, but we can absolutely um, bring it up at town meeting, get a feeling at town meeting for how many or what percentage of the people who there were there felt that it ought to be changed. Mm -hmm. And we can take that information to our representatives and senators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the only way we can work on it right now. Uh, Natalie Lay has been pretty receptive, very receptive to the small towns in her constituency. And so I think she's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a town can, uh, one town cannot change it. It's no. state, state. It's a state law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a state law, uh, Chapter Forty Four E, I think. Yeah, and um, it ha would have to be go through legislation, I believe. Mm -hmm. But I think the Assessors Association certainly would be a good place to ask to get behind it. Mm -hmm. um, it. There may already be a little. Um, I mean, interest in other communities that just hasn't grown into a movement yet. Mm -hmm. As a child of the seventies. <laughs> okay, we had another interesting little thing uh, just come over to our office um, with regard to any sort of an office injury incident. We now have a form to fill out for that. Now, did we look at, <laughs> that takes care of that. Yeah. Did we look at Melissa Smith's building plans last time? No. This is the building plans for the house that is under construction at 16 Husick Road, Cape Style. Mm. Yeah, someone from Lusick Road yesterday when they is this the the one we yeah where the big hole of dirt oh okay. <laughs> in the dirt okay okay yes. yes the foundation is already in oh nice oh mm -hmm. is it already yes wow someone on one of the Lusick Road folks yesterday told me when they came in to vote oh oh get back to side oh. oh it's a walkout yes. Apparently on that uh, east side, I guess. Yeah, it didn't look like the land was really that, but it must be able to. Hmm. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. nice. So we'll have oh, that as you, you, please. Okay. Yes. We'll have that as new growth for next year. Yeah. That'll be nice. We've had a couple of surveys come in. This one is on the Thersier land up on Pine Hill Road. You know where that is? Uh, up Pine Hill Road. Yeah, at the very beginning of Pine Hill Road is the Hardick House, and then this is the fourth year house over here. Okay. Beautiful old colonial with the barn attached. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, that road loops up, and they own the land all the way up to where it comes around straight and starts up to the top. Uh, this is where the old McLeish started, mm -hmm. and the studio is. Yeah. So just below that, they've uh, drawn out an eight, a three-acre parcel. That I believe is going to be a family, a, a digital family house. Oh, for one of the children. Oh, so how many acres do they own in all? Do they have an? Uh, oh yes, they still have probably 15, 12 to fifteen in oh. addition. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was a nice piece of property there. Yes, down. yes. Although this part is all with wedge. Oh. And and kind of difficult, but uh, they worked it out, and they'll they'll have. Uh, they do have an easement up in here that was granted uh, earlier this year that could come in from here, which wow. would be much better than trying to get in up over the ledgy mm -hmm. rises there. Yep. Oh, what? So we have that one. And you want to say? Yeah, just initial up in the box, if you would. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you. Oh, did you? No, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is another one. This is over on Maple Street, um, the Bonifaz property. Let's see. If you come up Maple from Pumpkin Hollow, yeah, you come up the hill, you mm -hmm. know, the little house, mm -hmm. and then the next house is a big yellow colonial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the Bonifaz house. Oh, and that actually, as far as this is concerned, is down here. Yep. And his barn is barn yeah. office is in here. Mm -hmm. And they're cutting off what I think is an old gravel bank and making it into a separate lot. Are they what are they going to do with that? Don't have any idea. Oh. Don't have any idea. Looks like they're keeping a right of way through it over toward the west end. Mm -hmm. uh, for better access to the rear of the property because there is field and so forth back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. But that lot, the value of that lot will be new, new uh, growth for next year. Yeah. Yeah. It reduces the value of the existing lot, but creating a new lot, the whole value of it is new growth. Right. Yeah. Oh. Okay. They got actually everything. 16. Mm -hmm. 0.98 rating. 16.56 acres remain. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's good. Are they in some kind of a chapter? No, they aren't. Oh. But it's beautiful back there. It is. Some is wet. Yeah. Some is open field. Some is wooded. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's, it's kind of pretty looking up at it or looking across at it from Elijah's ride or from the Carson Bench House. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty looking across at it. This is simply the uh, August list of transactions at the registry. And we've seen the, the deeds. But as you see, they report everything to us, what every type of transaction in town. Oh, okay. A discharge means paying off a mortgage. Really? Mm -hmm. Then you get notified of that. Yes, right? yes, yeah. yeah. And a release of lien on a mortgage for some reason or whatever. Um, municipal lien certificate is required for sale. So we often see them in conjunction with a deed or with a new financing arrangement. Okay. If someone gave out a mortgage to a bank so or whatever. So has got a bunch of the same properties, got a bunch of stuff. Indeed. Yes. Yes. Well, that's the house down here. Oh. Uh, that's old. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they bought it. They gave a mortgage on it. And they did a declaration of homestead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yep. That's interesting. Okay. Not many deeds this past month, that's for sure. It was very unusually quiet, but we have so little inventory in the market right now. Um, what is happening with that? Anything speaking on sales or anything? No, let me see. We do have a new parcel on the market, and it is a piece of land on Graves Road. Now, if you go down Reed's Bridge from the top, yep. you go left on Graves. Mm -hmm. You go about a quarter mile, and there's Lucart Road on the left. Mm -hmm. Immediately after that is the parcel in, in question here. Not in question, but uh, of interest. It belongs to John Barlow. And it faces the Herzigs, and he has it nicely cut down and trimmed out back to grass in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think uh, it's 25 acres for 25, uh, 250,000. And Ooh. it's vacant. It has a brook through it. Um, it's very pleasing to look at because he keeps the grass down and everything. So he might have. So is that, if you're going down there, is that. it on the right? No, it's on the left. Okay. It's on the left facing the Herzig house and uh, just immediately after Lucart Road. Okay. Yeah. As you start around that corner, you see the green part on your left. Mm. Oh. Yep. <clears throat> we have a couple of bills to pay. This is for a SD and little card reader for the camera cards. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and this is for the uh, renewal notice for our subscription to Marshall and Swift. They did include tax, but Laura's attached to the 
tax exempts. Uh, so the new figure will be three seventy nine ninety five. Okay. Okay, those have both been approved, so I will sign this, which is just the summary sheet. those bills. Okay. Now, you remember the one that you popped in to sign the other day? Mm -hmm. Jan wanted it in a, as it, she needed the same information, but a different format. So that one wasn't good either? No. <laughs> no. So I'm, here's the same information, okay. which was used again to create these two summaries of the abatements and the uh, community preservation surcharges. Oh, so this is what she needs. Okay. So we we're are just signing both of these. Yes, we're signing both of these, okay. and it's a, a duplicate effort to something done before that was previously voted. Oh uh, yeah, about the yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then you're going to do it was that. A, yes, oh, yeah, <laughs> we have to do that too. Yeah, the CPA. It was uh, the Rivolo piece found to be yeah. actually belong to someone else. It's one of those little mm -hmm. uh, small room sized <laughs> lots of those. Up on the Goshen line. And we have three motor vehicle excise abatements, all because the vehicle was sold or created, or in one case had to be re, um, registered in a different name. Mm -hmm. So we have the three certificates, the three applications which need to be signed, and the summary. Um, we'll do the applications first. Please look at them as you'd like. Mm -hmm. Ask any questions you want. Actually, if you sign down below. Um, oh, you want to sign yeah, down? This here. is an official. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Best connected up writing now. <laughs> well, now they got my initials on there, too. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I wonder how kids' signatures will ever be, you know, really as distinctive as a, a written cursive one is if they're not going to learn cursive. Yeah. Well, they probably still maybe learn a signature. I hope so. It's a good idea to at least have them learn that. Yeah. You know? It's a scribble. They'll learn a scribble. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> too many, too many documents are all by e-sign nowadays. I know. Yes. 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 Actually, sign anything. All loan documents, purchase and sales, vehicles. Yes. It's all e-sign. Oh. We old schoolers get nervous about that. Yes, <laughs> we do. Mm -hmm. I go, well, how can that be legal? <laughs> yeah. They're talking all the time about somebody hacking this and hacking that or stealing mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those are the three certificates. So we need to sign in these three places. Yeah. Oh, each one. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then this is the summary of those. These are the certificates that are actually mailed to the individual. Right. And then let Jan has the summary to work with. Okay, I was just gonna ask, why are we doing this? Yeah, and then the, the tax collector has to have the summary in order to uh, change your records accordingly. Okay.
Okay. You review any chapter in the uh we don't have any new permits. Talked about the new listing, no recent sales. Okay. Chapter applications have been uh, pouring in, which is nice. We may not have too many that are late. Um, we have one new ap uh, applicant, hasn't been in chapter in Conway before, um, Doug Dean. He owns land in Ashfield, of which a little piece comes into Conway up by Jones Corner Road on the north side of Jones Corner. Okay. So he has applied to put 1.2 acres of 1.2 acres owned in Conway mm -hmm. into chapter 61A to grow vegetables and have a sugar house on it and make maple syrup. Oh. And so we're going to wait on this because he can't go in with 1.2 acres alone. That's not enough land. Right. So we um, will find out from Ashfield when he's been approved there. So they can do it in two different towns. Even oh, sure. Yeah. Can be combined. They're, yes, if they're abutting part of the same. Okay. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, as long as the total right. qualifies, he's good. So I'm holding this one back. Okay. But I wanted to tell you about it because it's unusual. Mm -hmm. Most of these are 61 and 61B, and they are, I have reviewed them all. But I'll give you a half a pile here and you can start in reading and ask again, ask any questions that come aboard. Mm -hmm. And then we seal it on the back of this. You can sign it there. Right here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these are all, they're all in good order. They all have returned everything, all the information they need to. Okay. Yeah. Any amounts of uh, sales that they have to put in and all have been double checked and are qualifying amounts. And it, well, they do have someone uh, pay their property or whatever. They do have the signature of the lessee, which is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some people attach little notes and some of them are about the activity of the property some of them have news yes who is this one that's a piece over in East skinny and one of the owners has passed away and so she sent me a copy of the certificate of, de of death so that i can take it off the account uh interestingly enough normally we cannot change an account name unless a new deed is issued. Um, and this will take care of it. It proves the woman no longer exists, so we can take her off the, and put a note in it that we received a copy of her death certificate. Mm -hmm. That was very good thinking on the part of the, the uh, folks to send that without us having to write it back to them and ask. Well, they probably had to be doing it on yes. other things. When something happens like that, you have to do a lot of that. Yes, it is true.
Oh, thanks. But we'll have hazard and send it over there. I'm looking at all my paper clips. Um, Side that over. Oh, there's one here. Yeah. I believe I'm going to. I think that's the only one I need. Oh. Yeah, I used a binder on these. Oh, here's another one. Oh, we already signed this one. Oh, I just left to. This is a prior year. Oh, we must have got this one out for them to use to make out their new one. It's an old one. You are right. I probably can't. Well, another paper clip. Hmm. This person always writes a, a letter. It's wonderful. Is that, <laughs> is that Andrew? Yeah. He's, he's a he cares so much about his land. He's very involved in it. Ah. And so he always, and he's retired now, I guess. So he always writes a wonderful letter saying exactly what he's done on the land and oh, what he had to do and oh, why he did. And, and it is an over the top version of what we ask for. It's great. I thought you had to have 10 acres for a chapter 61A. Yes, but they're only, who is that? They're only putting, no, five acres for 61A. Oh, five. For 61B. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if I mentioned that as far as 61, forestry management is concerned, mm -hmm. they are not obliged to send us an annual report. We sort of send us this out asking, what, what you've been up to, kind of, you know, or, or could you tell us what you've been doing and mm -hmm. has there been any activity on the property? Mm -hmm. Because when there's time, it's a, good to take these and look at the chapter 61 plans and see if they're working anything toward the work lined out and the goals of the forest management plan. Right. Yeah. Uh, the but there's nothing who, making them do that though, right? Except the fact that they're in it. And if we as the assessors mm -hmm. feel that it's been completely ignored mm -hmm. and perhaps over more than one 10 year period, if can, if can, if, can recommend and if if directed work has been ignored, mm -hmm. we can ask the state forester to go and inspect and make a determination as to whether or not they deserve to continue in Chapter sixty one. Yeah, and a lot of that is harvesting. Yes, and... it sometimes it may be a ten year plan that says paint your boundary lines. That's it. That's all you need to do for this ten year period. Really, it might be. It got out some invasive species in this particular location. Mm -hmm. It might say um, do an understory thinning. It might say do a, a hardwood harvest. Mm -hmm. They each vary completely. Yeah, I'm thinking about having that done. But mm -hmm. I just didn't have the, uh, that done. Right. Well, the forester consults with the owner. Mm -hmm. uh, the forester walks the property and consults with the owner right. and discusses the owner's desires and expectations for the property. They may be for um, endangered species protection. They may be for wildlife habitat. They may be for long-term income, um, mm -hmm. whatever. And that gets built into the plan that's created. Yeah. Does the accountant need another copy of the Revello abatement? I always give them one. In addition to Jan, oh, that's the letter that goes together. Oh, it's two. What's well, no? I'm sorry. I'll put that one here with you. What, these are ones I signed. Smith, right? That's the Smith letter. You can just read it separately. It's fun. Oh. Okay, I'm still signing here because I've done too much talking. 
Did she need the cash flow report back? Or is that just for you? No, that was just for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. One less paper to yep. send in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Are you still reviewing your chapters? Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's pretty, pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's offered to take us on a walk through his property anytime. I'd like to take him up on it in good weather, you know, and so these have both signatures. Okay. What was this one over here? Oh, that is one that's from a prior year. Oh, that had been taken out. Oh, for the people to use to fill out their new one. Oh, so we don't no, don't need to do that one. Okay. Do you want to put that with um, I'll catch I'll feed it in when it gets I get to it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, these are ready for you. Okay. In another 10 days or two weeks, we'll make phone calls or send emails to remind those who haven't returned their form yet to please try to get it in on time. Please get it in on time. It's marked very clearly hmm. on the cover letter and the form itself that is due October 1st. And they were sent out in August, so should have had they had time yeah sufficient time and Okay, so I still, how can they be doing this with eight acres? We just want to have 10. Let's see, was this? This is 61B. No, ooh. no 61B requires 10. Does it? Thinking. Five. Yeah, it is a minimum of five acres. Oh, for 61B? Yes. What's the one for 10? 61A, agriculture. Well, I just asked you that one and you said that was only five acres. So chapter 61 and 61B, forestry and recreational mm -hmm. space are five acres. 
Oh, oh in the four streets. Now, wait a minute. Oh, hang on. Hang on. I'm confusing <laughs> myself. All right. One of them's 10. Forestry is 10. Okay. Yes. Agriculture at five. Okay. Recreation open space at five. five. Okay. So agriculture yes. is the 10. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I know them. I'm just reading. <laughs> well, I was confused. So I don't want to throw the issue. We beeped. You have an email address. Oh, that's, that's me. That's my oh, iPad. Oh. <laughs> it's connected when I come here, so um, it beeped. Oh, oh. And we thought it was the owl. <laughs> no, I knew it wasn't the owl. I just wasn't sure if it was your computer speakers telling you you had. Oh, I keep them turned off usually. Or way, way down. Because I can see the little icon. <laughs> keep that down at the on the footer. So I'll make a deal with you. I'll go to the other office on my way home to drop off. Oh, well, yeah. I'm not going to be back until Monday. Right. So I that would be very kind. Thank if you. If you would drop that piece of mail in the box on your of way course. home, I'd be very happy to. Yeah, we want to get that abatement over there and mm -hmm. happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, nope, that sounds like a great arrangement for me. Okay. You more weeks of these piles. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to take the um, that's a little bit off this one. Yeah, of course, I was and just put it over on my desk and. And do that in the day. Yeah. Yeah. So these I did also, I believe. And I think so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
I'm still one more. One yeah, more. One more. One more. Last one. Hmm, it's a busy week. Yep. And I think we'll have several more of these oh. this size week, though, before we're done. Oh, yes. Must be close to 190 now because we had several new ones. Um, in the past, people in forest management have been notified by the state oh. the year and a half before theirs is their 10 year plan is running out mm -hmm. to, you know, as a reminder to get hold of their uh, forester, get a new plan done and submitted so that it's in on time. Oh, that was nice. To continue the plan. Yeah. yeah. Um, some people have said that they have not been notified. I don't know why. If, um, Pandemic, it's rude of Yes, it did. <laughs> it did. And uh, that is probably part of it. So at some time when things get a little slower, I'd like to go through all those who are in forest management and double check their dates. Mm -hmm. And it can't hurt for us to send a line saying that yours will be expiring on December 31st of 2020. So they have to have a new plan every 10 years. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, a new plan. Um, oftentimes there are state or federal funds to help pay the, pan the plans, mm -hmm. which is a nice arrangement. The foresters can tell you more about that than I. And um, they're working for the health and benefit of the forest. Mm -hmm. And so a homeowner doing this, going into it with the true intent to follow it mm -hmm. is also working for the health and benefit of their property. Right. Yeah. It's just an improvement on the property. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Some people go into it for the reduction in taxes only. And well, that's a benefit too. <laughs> well, sure it is. But it doesn't do anything for the intention of the program. Yeah. And that's where we can be in the uncomfortable position of having to say, well, I can't see that you've done anything in the last five years that followed your program. Um, is there a reason why? Mm -hmm. There can be reasons. There can be very poor market conditions for selling wood if you're told to have a poor a harvest. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be weather conditions. You know, there can be problems or changes in the family, you know, deaths in the family, things like this. But they could always change it to... Um... They could open they could. spaces. Oh, absolutely. So if they absolutely, if they, and that's what we would have to suggest. Yeah. And so this is why we review these things every so often. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're down to any other business that arises after post. Oh, a review of the twenty three values. Then, last one is any other business. Mm -hmm. I've completed the preliminary residential. Um, all of them, basically all the property values. Mm -hmm. We did add the one point, uh, the eight percent increase across the board on everything except chapter land, and it has worked out to bring the sales up to an acceptable range for the state. Mm -hmm. The values that are determined by our adjustments on the sale properties have to be within 10% one way or the other of the actual selling price on a single family house. Okay. Vacant land would get a little bit wider window, 20%, I think either way. But so we come up with our new values. We, we do the multipliers, we come up with the new values. We take the ones for the sale properties and we look at them. Is this within 10% one way or the other of the, the actual selling price? If it is, then that lends, lends credence, it lends uh, strength to the new values overall. So we ended up bringing our 22 values, which calculated out to running at about 88, 90% of market value up to 96, 97%. Mm -hmm. And that gives us a little buffer. I think I said before, I don't want to go up to 100% because 
that's a, it's it's just too close. Um, we don't have enough sales that would completely satisfy. I think things saying okay, one hundred percent. This is why we're looking at them every single year. Mm. Yeah. yeah, the interest rates changing could change. Yes, values could change. We're noticing, yeah, even though we have a rotten inventory, a very small inventory, um, the sale action has slowed right down. One deed in the month of August. Yeah, compared to what we had in June, May, June, or July. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that being said, I printed out the reports of values for last year. That's last year's and this is this year's. Okay. So that you can look at them. It's, it's called the LA4. It is an itemization of each category of value. Oh, so this is the category, yes. Right. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd have to look at the well, that's what, right. they you what they are because I'll, I can't. 104 is a two family house. Oh, we have that many. We do. Hmm. We do indeed. Yes. Yeah. So we don't have any 102s. Those are condos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Miscellaneous 103, 109. 109 is two houses on the same property. A 103 is a trailer. Mm -hmm. A 111 is a four family. Okay. And we had not had one till this year. 130, 132 is, is vacant land that's not in chapter. 106 is vacant land with something like a shed or a barn on it, okay. an outbuilding. Mm -hmm. 200s are open space. We don't have that category. 300s are commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, four, uh, 400s are industrial. Uh, Wait a 300s are commercial. Yep. Okay. Straight commercial. Um, in other words, like the country store, like the bank. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, the inn. No, the inn is a mixed residential and commercial. Right. That comes up down yep. below. The 400s are the straight industrials. That includes orchard equipment, the hydro plant. Um, yes. No, that's in a special category. Um, properties like that. Mm -hmm. 450 to 452 is the solar array, actually in the hydro plant. Yeah. So the 400s are straight. Um, what uh, the old Culver pallet mill? Oh yeah, is in the 400s. Yeah, as an industrial. Yeah. Then Chapter 61 categories. Somehow the computer splits them up. Um. But gives us the final totals. So there's actually, if you add these two together, yes. that's what's in there. We have 92, 61, 62 in the. Okay, 92 yeah. plus 62 plus, whoa, 110. We have to two, no, can't that. That seems high. That seems high, 250. But um, I don't know. So oh. that would be 90. Well, don't forget that's some 90. properties are in multiple. Yes, they're down here. Okay. Yeah. That's 90. Mm hmm. 110. Mm hmm. And 62. Oh, 62, yeah, yeah. Um, these mixed codes are for things that are partly residential and partly something else. Uh, we don't have any 012s, but we have 013s that are partly residential and partly commercial, but gone way in. Mm -hmm. It's a good example of that because she lives there. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of the rooms are dedicated to that. Yeah. Uh, 501s, the 500s are, are personal property. 501s are individuals, personal property. It may be someone who owns a large tractor, mm -hmm. or it might be, um, uh, let's see, some of the ones, the companies that do business here in town and have property here in town are included in that. So are businesses property in that? It depends. If a business is not incorporated, mm -hmm. Then things like the office equipment mm -hmm. are taxable mm -hmm. as personal property. If the business is incorporated, they are not. That's the general rule. Mm -hmm. It's already being paid on the state and federal level. Uh -huh. So it's not due on the town level. Yeah. Okay. The so that's the 501s and the 502s. We have one of those. Now we're getting into the utilities. Uh, 
Comcast has three different accounts here in town. MCI has two different accounts. They just created another one. We have Verizon. We have all of those. That must be a 504. 504 is the telephone, uh, electric, I believe. Mm. Yeah, Western, uh, Eversource, NSTAR, mm. and New England Power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the telephones are in one, the electrics in another, and then the 505, 551 is the hydro plant and the solar array. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and we're comparing. So those is, are the new was, values. And this was 21 and this is 22. Uh, 20, I mean, 21 and 3. 22 and 23. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you didn't have, you don't have the this total. This shows the, you don't have the total on there, like this game. No, because they haven't been approved yet. This shows um, the, this actually does show you the totals. It compares one year to another and gives you the percentage of change. Oh, good. That's called the LA4 comparison report, where it looks at the two years. And then I have to go in and justify each of the changes explain what, which property it is and why it changed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Each property that changes creates two actions there. Mm -hmm. So why would a three family go down so much? Did it be changed from a three family to a two to a four? Oh, okay. okay. So in that case, I have to remind my LA4 report where say, hey, it came out of the 104s and then it went into because it was created a, it was mm -hmm. made into 111. Mm -hmm. Then I have to add it to the 111s and say it was came out of the one 104s. Guys. I see. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, worked up a little notice to put in the currents about the expected increase mm -hmm. in value and the offset um, that will happen, the partial offset that will happen because of a decrease in the tax rate. Mm -hmm. So due simply to the increase in values. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I hope folks will realize that it's a similar situation to last year when the increase in the values was offset almost entirely. And ended up being between a one and a half and a 2% generally increase in the actual tax bill, not the 8% that we increased value. The other thing, the eight, that's from 2022 to 23 is 8%. Yes. Yeah. So what did you just say? I say said, again? okay, because, <laughs> of, yeah, because of the increase in values. Right, I got that. We have enough revenue, uh, enough, to, that it will reduce the tax rate mm -hmm. because we only have to raise right. a certain amount of money. Right. So the tax rate going down yeah, I got that. is going to mean that your actual bill is not increased 8%, but is increased probably someplace in the 2% range. I don't know yet because mm -hmm. we don't know the ta new tax rate. Right. Yeah. Well, we don't know the, what we... The, right. We don't know the... The, the, the budget. budget. The preliminary values yeah. have to be approved first. Mm -hmm. We know the budget, yes, oh. from town meeting. Mm -hmm. And the preliminary values have to be approved. Then um, they get fed in to the calculations for the tax rate, but not until the state, our local advisor goes, goes over all the changes mm -hmm. and she sends it to the state and they give preliminary approval of the values. Mm -hmm. And that's when we go to a classification hearing because we know our numbers and say, okay, here are the numbers. Do you feel it's advisable to split the tax rate between the residential and the other categories? And traditionally the answer has been no, but we have to do the classification hearing every year so that each year the new numbers mm -hmm. can be re reviewed individual as, as an individual year. Um, so they don't wanna split them? No, 
the it gets split between residential and everything else right which means that anyone who has commercial or industrial or personal property would be taxed at a much higher rate oh okay you told me that yeah yeah so it's all the same yeah. yeah in in Conway the recognition has been that we only have a couple of a few small businesses mm -hmm. We want to keep them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we don't want to hit them with an extra financial burden if we can avoid it. Mm -hmm. And our commercial uh, is largely composed of chapter land. And so farmers who are making a living on it and continuing the agricultural mm -hmm. work, um, we don't want to hit either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that will be I mean, well, I, uh, now I should, shouldn't assume here. Um, I would be making, expect to be making that recommendation at the capitalization uh, classification hearing. And of course, you'll be there too if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel comfortable with that? By making this? The recommendation that we stay with one tax rate. Oh. Yeah. As opposed to splitting it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You feel you understand it? Huh? I do. Well, good. let me just say what I think I understand. Okay, good. <laughs> that, um, so if you split it, you would be charging more mm -hmm. to companies. They would pay a higher percentage yes. than what a homeowner would pay. Exactly. Yeah. And so we're, you're saying not to do that. That's always been the recommendation in the past. Yes. Yeah, and I think a lot of towns do that where businesses pay a bigger percentage. They do. Than, uh, um, but we don't have that, that many businesses to do that. Precisely. So I got it. Precisely. Yeah. So am I saying that correctly? You are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cities, especially where they might have a business on the first floor and then residences upstairs or even apartment houses. Mm -hmm. That's considered a business, um, depending upon whether it's owner occupied or not that kind of thing, they they have to look at that situation very carefully. Mm -hmm. You know, do the businesses cost us any money? Any increased amounts in, in utilities, in water, you know, should their rate be different? Mm -hmm. in, in security, all those things. Although, yeah, you don't want to run out any businesses in town. No, absolutely yeah. not. No. No. Mm -hmm. So there we have that. Okay. So the final figures are going uh, um, with our local advisor. I've not had an acknowledgement yet from her that she received the information, but I did leave a message today on her uh, voicemail mm -hmm. and we'll be kind of pestering to her <laughs> with her until I hear that she has received them and when she might be finished looking them over, mm -hmm. when she, she can expect to send them to the state. They usually okay her work within two days. Then we can post and have the classification hearing. Mm -hmm. And that has to be posted 48 hours ahead of time and be in the local, uh, we have to put it in the newspaper as well. Mm -hmm. So that is a matter of timing. At the classification hearing, the choice of the single rate is uh, made. And if it is single, we're able to determine what the tax rate will be. This is with the select board. Yes. It is done right. That's done with the select board. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that meeting, we can fill in mm -hmm. that they approved that. And then the um, recap program tells us what our tax rate will be. Mm -hmm. And we then have approved final values and a tax rate. And we start handing things over to the tax collector and her folks at QDS who will print and mail the bills. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm understanding what is the process and what's happening. Mm -hmm. But I still have questions as to how our values are calculated because we're we talked about the concerns with the Tyler programming. Yes, and most of those have been answered. And the ones that are left are things like with owners' addresses and stuff like that. I don't find any more serious. Uh, well, we were just any talking more values last time worry. The boss was here that, that and it makes no sense what how things were right. And they've solved a few of those things since then, and I've been able to incorporate them into the figures that you're seeing now. Which ones the got correct, solved? 
the grit changes, basically all of them, the several that we had outstanding with regard to the um, cost ladder on residences and so forth. Cost ladder, how they pull the numbers in from the right and add them up. How many were there then that were? I had questions. three questions. That's all? Oh, yes, that were still outstanding. Hmm. Well, because we were looking at this and none of it made sense. Um, how well, that, uh, that, that form is from July. And that's from July. And what yeah. changed from July till now? Well, a number of the, we, for one thing, where it came in, we figured out what percentage to add to things. Uh, no, well, these were 2022. So you would have brought them the value from 2022. Yes. Yes, it was printed in July. Yes. This book spreadsheet was printed in July. Yes. The values in it, many of them have changed. They've all changed because of the 8%. Well, that's for 23. For 23, and that's what we're working on. 22 is closed and gone. I did find one chapter customer whose land was not properly calculated with 61B, 61, in 22. And we'll pull that out to give an abatement, which we'll do probably next week. So I still have a problem with all this because I'm looking at 22s and like when Russ was here, it doesn't make sense how we're calculating the values in a group. 22s okay, can only set. be used as information or learning or perhaps to find something you, that you'd like to look at in 23 now, mm -hmm. okay? Um, anyone who wanted to apply for an abatement should have and could have and should have. And I hope that anyone who feels that their value is off this year will apply for abatement. Absolutely. Abatements have to be filed with in the period in which you have to pay the bill. If the bill goes out October 1 and you have to pay it November 1, that's the period in which you have to file abatement. You can't, we can't accept applications after November 1. Mm -hmm. So please get applications for abatement done on time. Also, every property owner is welcomed and I'm del we're delighted, Laurie, or you, I, anyone, to sit down with the property owner and go mm -hmm. over the property, over the details of the mm -hmm. building itself and see if there are if things have changed for the better or the worse, if something has been detached from the building, you know, they took off an old shed mm -hmm. and we didn't know about it because we haven't been there since 18. Um, and so we encourage that, absolutely. Should we also mention, and I could be incorrect, but along with that abatement application, the homeowner should expect that part of the process of reviewing that application is a site visit, yes. including indoor. Including interior visits, yes. yes. Okay. Full interiors. Yep, that is part of the application process, uh, abatement process. It's on our information sheet. It'll be on the website. I think it is. So are we going to review your home? So this coming for the next year, yes. Okay. And yours and Russ's. <laughs> well, you can put in we should. You should put in for an abatement. I have no reason to put in for an abatement. Oh, okay. Then. Could you keep saying how you feel sure, you're it's cool. overvalued, but most ranches are valued high. And, you know, my taxes are reasonable. They haven't skyrocketed since I bought the house. They've been pretty consistent. There was one tiny little thing, and I believe we took care of that a couple, about a year ago. I think so. Yeah. And, yeah. and that was minuscule. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So. Well, I think a lot of my questions that I brought up have not been ad addressed in uh, these evaluations. Actually, I think that, like, like I said the other day when we were out on our site visits, yeah. um, 
we need to begin at the beginning with learning assessment, mm -hmm. which is not diving into these right away. It's, I think, easier when you don't know how it's done and how the process and how the mathematics work to see something and come to a mistaken conclusion about it. Well, and wait a minute. Okay. You were elected in June of this year. Yes. You came on the board mm -hmm. just over three months ago. Yes. And so you're, it's a three year learning process. So we're at the beginning and we need to build on each step as we go along. I'm trying to explain things as we go, but when you were asking questions last year and everything, many of them were, I think because you had picked up a misinterpretation of what some of these figures represent or how they're, they're done. And so that's why I'm trying to go back and we start at the beginning and see almost like we see a house being built and we go for a framing visit and I so think forth. I think I know a lot more than you're thinking I know. Well, great. Because after reviewing a lot of property cards, there are many mistakes on those property cards of just not being accurate. Well, for one thing, they haven't been reviewed, the homes, for a long time. A lot they were of all reviewed in 2018. Exterior, we did, exterior, yeah, exteriors. But it's it's odd that um, and some interiors, of course. And so, are you saying every house has been? When was the last time every house in town has been done? Interior and exterior. No, oh, exterior. Twenty eighteen. Okay. Because I mean, the house across the street, our house. You've got the garage as the detached garage, which is I hot. don't have as a. It's, it's. It's not built like the regular residential garage, is it? Is that the one that's part built more like a barn? I'm trying to picture it. So why isn't it a town? Because then we, in order to value it as a barn, the de a, 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 a garage attached to a house mm -hmm. is generally much better than a barn. And so they have higher costs. So one that's more like a barn, the, a lot of these old houses on the street have barns at the back that are attached but they were a barn. Mm -hmm. The car was kept in the basement and maybe it's in the hay for the whatever, horse or the goat or whatever in the upstairs. Mm -hmm. And so in order to value them as a barn, I have to call them a detached structure, even though it's actually hooked up to the house. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's fine. Okay, good. That's so. Now, I had asked you to look at a couple of things. Um, one was the land schedule and see if you could come up with a good way of putting it out on a piece of paper and presenting it so that folks can Well, I think we went over that. It. We reviewed that while I was here, and it looked very, what you had down was very good. It made sense to you, and yeah. you felt that someone could, not acquainted with it, could pick it up and, yeah, good. Yes, we'll do that then. we we'll carry through on the land schedule. And um, we can start in. I just find that the all this stuff was wrong. The effective years were wrong on homes. Everything was jumbled up with the, this, and we're just going through and passing them as accurate. And I understand you can't go through them all, but it just seems the effective years changed. A great deal. And I just find that it's like, how do you pass this and not look at each one that changed and figure out why? And you don't even, you couldn't even figure out why. When we go to a house and review it, we come back, we enter all the correct information. Yes. Our judgment call is conditioned. Yes. Anything else is a factual number mm -hmm. or measurement mm -hmm. and we go from there to the next but you're saying you have a problem with the program we did so you have no problem with the program at all anymore is that what you're saying right i'm saying that they've solved virtually everything that i was complaining about or been testing or wondering about so we're not going to look into any other programs because you think tyler is fine oh, i don't know 
I think Tyler is very difficult. It's what we have. I do want to look into other programs. I hate the thought of a change because it means an entire conversion process again with reviewing all the data against each itself again. Mm -hmm. It means having to have an open house for 10 days so that people can come in and review. It means uh, many reports to the state. It's a very cumbersome, expensive mm -hmm. process in addition to the cost of a new program. And getting our consultant in to help with some of this as well on the specific valley properties that he works on. Now, and the most important thing is getting town meeting to pass tens of thousands of dollars to do this when it was just done a few years ago. It, it can amount to yes, a, but a significant sum. If, and if people are getting assessed correctly because of the program, is that fair? If they feel they're not getting assessed correctly. If they're not correctly, getting assessed then, correctly, that's not they, fair. It's but not I want fair, people but, to come in and make sure they are. But they're not coming in and questioning. Well, I've questioned it. Yes, yes you so have. have. And I haven't got that straightened out. Well, we're not voting on that tonight because Russ is here. I know, here. but it's been a whole year. And that's what the, it's like. That process doesn't seem to work very well either. Well, it's difficult when we explain something and you say, I don't agree, so it doesn't matter. And then we have to explain it again. And needless to say, we will get back to it as soon as Russ is here. The people to review our work are the Department of Revenue. Lauren has been here. She is an experienced assessor and local advisor. All of our local advisors before her have personally reviewed. They were here for two or three days going through our files. Mm -hmm. They take a pile this high of randomly pulled files. They go out and they look at the properties. If the owner's out there, they ask questions about it. They're verifying our data independently of us mm -hmm. so that they can verify our values. Mm -hmm. I, I spoke with uh, Linda on the phone. With Lauren? Is it Lauren or Lauren Linda? Aldrich? Uh, let me see, I wrote her down. Lauren Aldrich is our advisor. Um... No, Linda Bradley. Oh, Linda Bradley. Okay, in Boston. Mm -hmm. I spoke with mm -hmm. her. She's been out here many times. She was here for the last conversion. Yeah, because you stated at one of our meetings that you sent in your property values to the state. And I said, thinking, do I Not need to her? Say? No one sends in our property values to the state. Of course we do. Not your personal ones, you don't send Personal them. property values, yes. They go in on that form, the 500s are all right there. But you said you sent them into the state because I asked you why did yours go down so much in one year and you did it yourself. You didn't, Russ didn't approve it. You, you just did it yourself. There was one year when I had my house at average and Russ and Mount Malcolm both said, um, no, last year. You better change it. Last year, it went down from 90% good to 75% complete. And how does the complete. house complete? Okay. That was looking at the chart of completion and comparing it to my house. How does it go down from 90 to 75? We looked at the chart again. What chart is that? It's the one in the Marshall and Swift catalog that shows X percent of. Uh, Completion for framing, X percent for rough electric, X percent for rough mechanical, then all the finished data. I'll show it to you right now. So yours is only 75% complete? That was how it calculated out. Well, that's interesting. It is right there. Okay. Well, I'd have to. I have a lot of those categories get split. 
For example, if half a category is done, you take half of the allowance. Mm -hmm. So, but how does the your a house go down from 90 to 75? We were using different charts. It did. It seems like a lot, and I'd be glad to go over it again. Well, no one else has changed. They wanted to look at mine because it was. They felt that it was overvalued. Your house is overvalued. Malcolm and Russ felt that it was not in average condition, and that because of that, it was being it was being valued in average condition, and that because of that, it ought to be looked at specifically and felt it was fair condition. Yeah, but it's only, it went down from 90% complete down to 75. That's what changes your value. You take 25% off yes. the replacement value when you come up with a total. Right? Mm -hmm. No, that was taking 15 off. Well, no, you were taking 15 off. No, you, you take, were you take you were at nine. I was at 90, went to 75. That's 50. right. But so when you figure it for 2022, you take 25% off your total replacement value. I guess I see where you're going. I will gladly I just take find it photos of my house and bring it in. I just find that it's like my um, family does not want. I'm I you as have me assessed at 110 a square foot. You're at 63 a square foot. That's a little different. It's higher than that, but at any rate. No, it isn't. We will check it before these values are finalized. Oh, that would be good. All right. Um, do we have any other business before the meeting tonight for the board? No, I guess we will finalize mine at some point. But um, mm -hmm. when are, when is the um the approval thing that we have to do. It's as soon as we get it done. I know, but what we, one would like to have bills out on October 1st, but if, to go in front of the uh, select board. The select board, we don't know until after we get the preliminary values. Oh, approved. so you don't know yet. That's right. Okay. They had added it to their agenda for this coming Monday. I think it's very iffy, very iffy that it can happen. However, if we meet on Wednesday, that's a possibility. The problem is I don't want to have to pay for too many ads in the newspaper. So you're saying they wanted to do it on the 12th and you can't. And we wanted to do it on the 12th, but they didn't. Oh, the you don't know if you'll have it back. Then. Right. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. And even if the approval came back, well, if it came back on the 12th, we'd be okay. It's a waiting game right now. Mm -hmm. So this has been sent into the state today. Uh -huh. Today, going to the state later this evening. I wanted you to see them first. Well, that's just totals. I mean, I just don't see where. Just from what we're talking the other time when Russ is here. We're talking about what we looked at, and he said, like he said, nothing makes sense. So I have a hard time just agreeing and saying, yeah, those figures are all accurate or fair. Let's put that. Not that they're not accurate. It is accurate to what is there, but mm -hmm. are they fair and consistent to everybody? No. Okay. Um, I wish Russ was here to help. Mm -hmm. with this if the figures don't go in i understand they have to know what we have to do if they were delayed mm -hmm. jan would probably say that we have to um, send out preliminary bills mm -hmm. now a preliminary bill is basically half of last year's final bill mm -hmm. and people don't like that because it doesn't give them any idea of what to predict for April. Mm -hmm. There's an additional cost to that too as well. So doing that is uh, not the preferable way to go. Mm -hmm. I tried very hard to have these in before Labor Day, but then I thought 
that you ought to see it before we submit it. And so the um, preliminary bills could be done. Um, I don't think even if you did a preliminary bill, are we going to be able to straighten out what is going on? No. It, so Russ and I don't see anything going on. You're well, the he, only one who does. Well, now, well, he hasn't did. he hasn't had a chance to hear that Tyler fixed those problems. But you said it was only three people and we were looking at all the charts and they did not make sense. No, you said it was three questions, not three. Three people. questions. Oh. Yeah, three procedures. Okay. Yeah. And they've been fixed. Oh, because I asked you and how many so properties. So any corrections that had to be done were applied to all properties, and I don't know how many it applied to. So you don't know what got changed, really. I know what got changed. Oh. In one case. A multiple, uh, an arithmetic, arithmetic process was clarified for me mm -hmm. so that I can see how they add things up to come up with the numbers they do. That didn't need to be changed. It needed to be explained because it's not at all clear. Many of the pieces of it are hidden functions, but I wanted to know how it's done. Right. So, and did, so that was explained. Okay. So mine was screwed up. So did that get corrected? In what way? Well, the garage. No, it's not. The garage is as it was when we decided a month or two ago because Russ hasn't been here and to vote and we have not voted to change your garage. I know we have not voted to change the garage, but we spoke about it last time when Russ was here. Yes. And the depreciation, the depreciation had gone up instead of down. Yes. And I found out why that happened. Oh, so that's and what I'm asking. You. Okay, that gets that's the columns question. Yes. That was the columns question. Yes. There is on every cost ladder for a dwelling. Mm -hmm. There is a line mm -hmm. that says additional RCM. Mm -hmm. Additional RCM. That line I cannot is not available for me to pull out of the onto a spreadsheet, onto a report. So I cannot show that, therefore I cannot show how that calculates. Remember I did that yeah. for you when I yeah. drew the line. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, that was explained to me. Okay. And But I cannot include that column that shows you this, if I may. Yeah. Oh, that's wrong. Oh, that was another sheet. Wait a minute. That was another sheet we did for me. What the heck did I do with it? I was just looking at that. Someone who has other uh, an addition, addition to their building. Yeah. For example, or extra features like they've added mini splits. Yeah. Or something like that. It yeah. gets added in down here uh, because it isn't used on yours. You don't have it. And that column is one that adds to the value. Mm -hmm. Is but, that new value or is that something that's a new value added in? Or is that, because um, he was saying porches aren't added on and that's not accurate. The porches are, are, are part of value. And in case the case of a porch, it gets added in on this other line and not in the house base value up here. The house base value is for the house alone. It does not include porches, um, as I say, mini splits, uh, addition fire. This is the one I was fire. looking at. Yeah. Is this the one you're looking yes. at? Yes, 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 yes. User amounts, user amount, that's mm -hmm. the one. This user amount is referring to things like the mini splits and so forth. It goes into the total cost, but I can't pull that column out to show it, it won't, it isn't available to me to pull into a report. Right. Okay. But that's the only thing where that allows this to make sense is when you have this number in it also. This gets but you to 117. Mm -hmm. But when it shows a, an RCN, which is the same, 
of 125,000, you're saying, where's the 8,000 difference? That's what we couldn't tell. We didn't know where it was or what it was. And Russ and I went looking and we found user amount. Mm -hmm. Then we went looking up above and saw that this added up to two or three different items up in the uh, description. Then they go down here, dwelling RCN, 127, additional RCN. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the porches. Additional RCN. Okay. Additional RCN is apparent appears to be additional structure row parts of the house. Mm -hmm. The porches, the you know, yeah, breezeway, ramps, decks, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Total RCN. Mm -hmm. Dollar per square foot. Now they're going back up here to the top somewhere. They're getting the base dwelling uh RCN LD. I'm reading yeah. upside down here. Yeah. Addition RCN, total RCN LD. This figure has changed from 24.6 down to 21,000 by depreciation. RCN LD, this is just the RCN, and is getting added in to the 106 to make a total RCN LD. Okay. Well, we had a, you know, so it comes out to 110 a square foot, but these numbers were not available in columns to bring over onto that spreadsheet that I printed out for you. Right, okay. So, so now, there's no now way you could have come up with the numbers at the end of the right because you didn't have these guys, the 21,000 and the 24 six. Well, I do because that adds up to this total. Here, but it's not on that spreadsheet over there. Yeah, it is. The 24th is six, uh, 21,000. Well, no, but it, but right. All I'm getting is the totals. Right. And you were asking how do we get the totals? And we couldn't see how we got the totals. Well, you know, we couldn't Russ see said these. that the totals were all different and they're not all different. They're different because this should be a visible. It should be visible, but they, should. and I can't make it visible. That does, okay, look at the totals are the same that's on here, right here. This gives you the information. So right here, it says 25,785. Right up here, where is it? Up here, 125,785. Right. And that then, is the base replacement cost new for the central house structure. Right. And then it comes over here, the total is right, right here. So we got all the information. But we don't have the information, the numbers between those two. But it doesn't really matter because I'm getting. Um... You requested to see clearly. Yes. How those calculations, how what you got from one figure to another. Mm -hmm. And that's this. Wait a minute. That's this addition RCN. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Where's my top thing? Is the figure that plus the depreciation is what leads you from one to the other. Mm -hmm. You cannot get from that figure to that figure over on the right with the information that you have. True. You cannot calculate it out True. yourself. Okay. You need this for every single house or building in order to see how the calculation was actually done. Yep. Right. Okay. So he was satisfied once he, we figured this out. He was satisfied on that score. Well, he was saying it changed a lot, that these did not make sense. Right, they didn't. Until you. Until we saw this whole process and that they. Okay. So do you even know what these are for? This additional RCN is, is for the porches. Okay. Um, as I say, porches, anything like that, structural additions to the house. Mm -hmm. Um. And so here's your total RCN that adds the basic, the dwelling RCN, mm -hmm. and the additions RCN. Okay. For a total RCN of 150, yep. 390, which is 129 a square foot. Okay. The base RCN less depreciation. This one. Right. Less depreciation, 125,790, less depreciation ends up at 106,920. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
the 24.6 is depreciated to 21,000. Okay. Those two added together. Replacement cost, new, less depreciation, 127,920, mm -hmm. which happens to work out to $110.56 a square foot. Right. Then the old multiplier was 94%. That was right. a couple of years ago. Well, that's 21. Right. And this, this is now 1.08. 1. 1. Mm -hmm. That's where our 8% gets added in. And so that'll be what yeah, it was. Well, one. Is. For 2020. Yes, it was one, one I mean, last 2022. year. 2022. Yes, it was. Yeah. So that's and this right. coming year is 1.08. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we still have a, a question as to how to get the, the effective year and why is that changing? Effective years change because condition changes largely. That's the primary reason. And the grade. Grade can change. Uh, for example, someone buys a house. They go in, they redo a lot of it. They do the outside. It, you Maybe it used to be aluminum siding. They take that off. They put on cedar clapboards. They put a new roof on. They go in and they put a much nicer modern kitchen in. A bigger, better kitchen. They redo the baths. They redo all the floors. Having a better exterior, they haven't changed the the structure unless they have to redo the sills too. But the grade of the house may change because of certain large scale changes like that. Condition is exactly what it is. Condition. If someone puts a luxury kitchen into an average house. The question is, does that affect so the how, grade? Why did some of the grades change and the condition stayed average and the grades changed? The grades were they log houses. That was that yeah. summary that we did where you said that all the log houses that are alike have to be the same grade. And why aren't they? They're not all alike. Well, no, we, we did come to this conclusion that many of them were. And we changed the ones to, to make like like. Well, I you say that, but I let's you do it. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I don't agree with it. And um, I just wanted to make that clear that I okay. just don't agree with it. And I see still a lot of things that are not fairly done. And Things are changing and the conditions. I mean, I'm just looking Let's, at this and the conditions are not reading what they're saying. What about, I teach you how to do a house inspection and you can start going out on them. Mm -hmm. You notify people ahead of time mm -hmm. and you go out on them and you do the full interior and exterior with photos. Yeah. And you can start and, and over the next couple of years or three or four years, you can do the whole town. <laughs> really? I'm not kidding. You're you're talking about every house in town possibly having problems. Yeah. And I don't see where let's, I mean, let's find these... out where the problems are and solve them. Well, I believe I do agree that a lot needs to be redone and reassessed or well yes. looked at. I don't have all the time I need myself to go out and do all that. Russ certainly doesn't. I don't know what time you are able to put into the job other than meetings and so forth. But it's what needs to be done. We need to have new interior exterior inspections. Yeah. And it hasn't happened. I see. It had, we had COVID but since the last exterior set of pictures of every single building in Oh, town. exterior, but that's not. But really... that also gives you some indication of condition. Uh -huh. And my, Malcolm was able to talk with some people. Mm -hmm. I think that yes, it's now time to start them again. I've said that before. Right. And to correct the problems that we find. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, if anyone comes in and looks at their paper and says, whoa, let's go. Let's go see that one right away and correct its problems. If if they want to apply for abatement, great, we will abate them. 
I don't think we can do fairer than that right now. Well, sounds good. Yes, I would love to see that happen. Okay. All right. I think, uh, yes. I'll move to adjourn at 7, uh, 652. Yes, I okay. agree. Second, second. Agreed. We're I to go. Go. All right.